excuse me, because I have a cold. I'm not from Minnesota, so this cold air and everything's kind of gotten to me. So, um, real quick, first I want to uh, praise God. Um, last night I uh, received for my final grades for my class, and I made an A in uh, graduate school for one of my classes, which uh, for some people an A is like, it's an A. But for me, and college and stuff like that, I strive for a C. So um, for me to have an A in, a, in the graduate class is, is pretty amazing. So I just want to give God the glory for that. So, um, I grew up um, in a Christian home. Uh, my father was a youth pastor. My mom was a missionary's child, a missionary kid. Um, so the gospel, Christianity, was always right there, always right there um, with me. And so for me, um, the gospel and Christ, I knew all the right answers. I knew what Jesus did. Um, I knew who he was, uh, but never made it real. Um, when I was about six years old, my... Uh, Dad was asking me all the questions. Who is Jesus? What did he come to do? Um, did he rise again? Or, you know, all the normal questions. And he would ask me, do you want Jesus to come inside your heart? And I would say, no. Repeatedly. Again and again. No. No. And so my dad was getting very frustrated with me. Um, and so my mom came over and said, look, let me talk to him. And so um, she talked to me a little bit more and um, figured out why I did not want to accept Jesus inside my heart. Now, mind you, I was about five, six years old, so I had the mindset of a child. And so I told my mom that I did not want to accept Jesus in my heart because I believed that my dad would have to literally cut my heart open and to put Jesus inside of my heart. And that, I was scared of needles, I was scared of a knife, I was scared of what would happen. And so after my mom reassuring me that that's not what that meant, um, then I accepted Christ. Um, so that was five, six years old, and I would consider that be my salvation when I accepted Christ. Um, but I look at my life as building blocks. Um, you take one block, and that's my faith. And then after that, you have another block, and another block. And so, um, um, so my first building block um, that occurred in my life um, would be um, Christmas of 2000. Um, that Christmas, um, we learned me, my mom, and my little sister, um, and my dad, uh, we learned that my dad had cancer again. Um, and he had cancer throughout his whole body. And so doctors felt it was you know, a go, um, that he would go through chemotherapy and he would be fine. Um, so after I think probably about four or five months of chemotherapy. Um, it wasn't working. So they decided to do a massive surgery and take out, I don't know, all, all, honestly, I was young, so I didn't know all what they took out, but um, I do remember it was a very long surgery. Uh, and that was in August of 2001. Um, November 9th of 2001, uh, my dad passed away. Um, and that was very hard. Uh, I was um, almost 15 years old. And so a young guy, a young teenager, trying to figure out life, trying to figure out who God is. You know, how, how does my faith work in this life of hardship? Um, and throughout all of it, my dad um, said that God is just, God is merciful, and God is sovereign. And so um, I hung on to those words um, in, my, in my young teenage years throughout all the different things. The second building block I would consider in my life, um, my testimony is the fact of 
I was raised in South Carolina. Um, I moved to Ohio. It's not as far north as Minnesota, but it, it was definitely a culture shock where you wave at people and people look at you weird because why are you waving at me? I mean, you don't know me. Um, you got up in Ohio or here, you don't have sweet tea, you don't have grits, you know? There's different things like that. It's a culture shock. Um, and so I would consider that a building block. I struggled very uh, in my sophomore and junior year of trying to fit in. Uh, not having a dad, not understanding everything. Um, but I'm very grateful for the different men that mentored me in my church today. Um, uh, I mentioned to you that my mom was a missionary's kid. So my grandfather, who was the missionary, uh, my mom's dad, um, he was bedroom and had many, many strokes. Didn't really know who I was, didn't know who my mom was, didn't know anything really at all. All he would do was preach all the sermons <laughs> that he preached, uh, despite his um, uh, not knowing anything through his strokes and stuff like that. So it was really interesting to, to listen to that and to grow up in a house full of women. It was just me, my grandfather who didn't know anything, and my sister, my mom, and my grandma. So I normally didn't win out on a lot of different things. Um, so, but it's, um, it was definitely a building block I would consider uh, in my life. Um, and I share these things not to have sympathy for me. I share these things to give God, God glory. Uh, throughout all of this is God's sovereign hand. Throughout all of this is God's grace. Because... In essence, I could have taken all these different things in my life and ran away from God. I could have been real easy to say, okay, God, I don't have a dad. I don't understand life. I don't understand what you're doing in my life, but you know what? Oh, well, I'm running away. That's not what I did. I embraced God because that's what we're supposed to do in tragedy. That's what we're supposed to do is to embrace God and embrace his truth and his love for us. Um, so I go to college, I go to college in North Carolina, trying to figure out what to do. Um, so I go to college for one year to study for the ministry. Didn't like it. I was like this isn't this isn't for me. Dad was a youth pastor. Grandfather was a missionary. My uncle was a pastor. I don't want to do anything with the ministry. But that isn't what God wanted. So after a year of running away from God and making some very poor decisions in that year um, with life, um, with friends, um, with different things like that. And so I really, really questioned, was I saved? Was, was my faith real? And so the night before I went back to college, I rededicated my life because I did not know I was really Christian. I wanted to know that later in my life, if something would happen, I wouldn't just base my assurance on when I was five years old as a little child, but I knew at age 19 I was saved. That I did what I was going to make this Christianity real in my life, and I was going to allow it to transform me. So that's what I did. Um, and after that, going to college, graduating college, uh, meeting Hannah, and then um, going forth uh, with everything. So, but um, all these different building blocks with my dad, with um, moving to Ohio, with uh, my grandfather, um, have all been hard. But God's sovereign throughout all of it, and God is just and merciful. And no matter what, we have to understand that we have to trust God. We have to. When we have nowhere else to turn, we have to trust God. Um, because when we think he's not there, we realize that he's carrying us. When we think that, when we're looking back in our life, <coughs> and we only see that one footprint, 
You realize that that's God. He's carrying us. And that's what we have to remember. And I just want to share a couple verses real quick. Second <coughs> Corinthians. Second Corinthians 1 through through 5. And this passage has really helped me um, through all the hardship and everything. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and of God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction. <coughs> with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. When I was coaching basketball in high school, there was 10 guys, 10 boys on my team. Only one of them had a dad. All the other ones were either their dads had passed away or their dads were in jail. <clears throat> because I knew what it meant to grow up with no dad during my teenage years, I was able to relate to them. I was able to minister to them because I understood what it meant. So the comfort that God gave me, I was able to give to them. And that's what we have to do. God gives us stuff so we can help others. And so throughout all of it, that's my ministry. That's what I feel called to do, is to help the hurting, to be there. I mean, there's other stuff that across this room that people have been through that I would not be able to minister to those particular people. I didn't grow up with a family that came from a divorced family, but there's people that have. So they're able to minister to those people. And that's what we have to remember. I'm sorry about this cold. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but... I was thinking the other day, the timetable of everything of meeting Hannah, <coughs> and during that year that I ran away from God, was the year that I needed to go back to college in order to meet Hannah. Because when she left the college that she was at here in Minnesota to come to North Carolina, if I would have stayed there at that college, we would have only met each other for one semester. Versus, since I took a year off, following my own sinful desires, following my own sinful passions, it put me a year behind from school, and therefore I was able to have a year and a half of Hannah. And therefore be able to meet her and get to know her and stuff like that. So in God's providence, in God's timing, everything went down. And even in my own sinful desires, God worked it all out. So that's what we have to remember. <coughs> 